Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and in front of us is something very special. This is a Yale Superior, one star and three star, and Milenico Magnum two in one pick tool. And this was made by um, GJ Locks. You can see that on this uh, cool little box here, GJ Locks. And this was lent to me by GJ Locks just for the purposes of me being able to show it off on my channel. Now, I saw this uh, first on Twitter, and um, I just really, really like it when locksmiths make their own tools. And this is, unfortunately for all of you lock sporters out there, a locksmith-only tool. If you go to the GJ Locks website, you'll see lots and lots and lots of um, handmade or hand-machined tools which uh, they sell, and wow is all I can say. The, 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 the craftsmanship there is, is quite outstanding. Really makes you drool. But unfortunately, you won't be able to buy these unless you are a locksmith. Luckily, I know that a lot of locksmiths actually watch my channel. So um, if you do fancy this pick or fancy looking at some other uh, two-in-ones and lever lock tensioning tools and lots of other locksmith tools, actually, please go check out GJ locks website links are below in the description and comments um, because there really is a lot on offer so what actually is this tool well this is a two-in-one tool there we go so two-in-one means that you tension using this outer uh, ring if you like and then pick using the inner and it is in two parts and you see here this um, it looks like it's tempered curved flag there really beautiful craftsmanship there really really nice very thin tip very precise and that's okay because we have these markings which are just etched on which line up with uh, this little collar here this little marker on the pick tool itself and this lines up with the pins in those locks so what locks am I talking about? If you don't know the Yale Superior, Platinum, 3 Star and the, I think it's a Milenico Magnum, here they all are. And they are all very similar. They have a configuration which is dimple pins and which are arranged slightly at an angle to each other along the keyway and sliders of which you have I believe three or four and if, I, if you look down this end of these locks, you'll see that depending on the type of lock and whether it's interior or exterior facing, you have different numbers of pins. So for the ones which are 35 millimeters, a very common um, length on these types of Euro cylinders, you can see that we have both a five pin, this is interior facing, and exterior facing seven pins, which is, um, in my experience, one of the more common configurations. Although if you look at this longer, um, is it what, about 50 mil side? You can see here we've actually got nine pins. And if you look, you can see that they are angled one way, then the other way, then one way, then the other way, all along the keyway, just slightly offset. When, you, when you're picking, yeah, it doesn't really make much of a difference if you're picking by hand, I have to say. Um, they're not angled too differently. You can also see here where these have been drilled out, where the sidebar pins would sit, these sliders. There you go, and you've got uh, four there, I think four there and four there. Uh, if you look down, let's have a look at one which hasn't been all the way disassembled, and you can just about at the top here see just there, where the tip of my finger is, let's see if I can point at it with a, uh, a probe, you can just see there, the slider there you go lovely so and there are four sliders i think in this lock the tool itself well let's put that the right way around go in and it'll tension twofold so it'll tension on one side there we go here and also the other side, this little 
prong just fits in this keyway and provides tension. And then you can go down and you can try and find the, the binding pins and, and press them down as you go. Once you've picked all of the pins, then you can use another tool to get tension on the lock. So you'll rest your finger on, slide out the previous pick, put this one in without losing the pins, surprisingly easy actually. And you'll put this little tension tool on to pick the sidebar. And the tool which GJ Locks has provided for picking the sidebar is a cut down pick which will go along the inner edge behind those sidebars and then you literally just wiggle and rake those pins they have quite wide gates and they almost without fail can rake with a little wiggle of uh, a tool just like this down the side as long as you've got tension on that should open it up first some of these they like the sidebar pins picked first or halfway through picking um, but mostly you can get away with picking the pins first and then the sidebar afterwards. So, um, before we go on to a demonstration of this, I just want to say that um, I was very impressed when this was sent to me in the post, in the way it's presented, um, the, the high quality of the craftsmanship that went into making this tool. It's very durable, it's very accurate, the markings are very accurate. Um, I genuinely found it very, very intuitive and easy to use, and it's um, and it comes in a really, really nice um, package as well. I, I, you know, it would still work fine if it's all in a loose bag, but it doesn't that just make a huge difference. I think it does. It really does look professional, and it is a professional tool for professional people. So yes, I, I thought I'd show this off on my channel just because I really, really like excellent craftsmanship, good thinking, great design, and this covers off all of those bases. I, I really hope um, you enjoy watching this in action, um, and we're going to be picking um, a Yale one star with seven pins, which I've partially disassembled, so you'll see me um, picking this earlier. Okay, I'll see you in a second. Okay, so we have um, a brand new one star in the vise and we're going to take the tool there it is and insert it in you see it comes in two parts obviously just make sure they're together as you pop it in and I think that gives you a good view of what's happening with the with the turning here now the tensioning tip here needs to just be pushed into the keyway so try to push slightly forwards when you're using the tool and the idea is of course is I'm turning clockwise and picking anti-clockwise what I'm not doing is I'm not going to screw in this little side tensioner there just because I personally feel that you can over tension it if you're not careful and so I like to um, use my fingers or tips of my fingers on this to give me that little extra bit of control. And then we just um, go along and see where we are. So um, just tap, you see it rotate there, just tap the tops of the pins, anything binding, decide what to do then. Okay, so first bind is pin seven. Increase the tension slightly. Nice little positive click there on the way out, nothing on six, so a little click on five, four, tiny click on three, little click on two there, nothing on one yet, go back to the back, this is a seven pin version actually, so uh, nothing on seven, nothing on six, five, because it's bound a little bit. There you go, good. Nothing on three. Little click on, oh, sorry, not four. Little click on three, two, and little click on one there. Back to the back, a little core rotation there. So seven, six. You feel that there's nothing there anymore. So seven's nothing, six, nothing, 
nothing, four, nothing at all, three, nothing, two, nothing, one. Okay, something there. And a really nice click. In fact, I felt that core just move a little bit more. So what we're going to do is put my thumb on the core like that. Be easier in a way if there was um, like a, a door handle or something there. And we're going to get the other tension tool, which is cut away slightly. It's going to pop that in the side and apply tension. There we go. Now we're going to get this um, this little tool. I don't know what it's made from. Probably like a a um, half ball or something like that, and just insert it down the side of the side bars. And there we go. We've got an open. Look at this. I'm not going to turn it all the way because I'm bound to um, get all sorts of sidebar pins and, and such like all trapped in there. Let's move this out of the way. There you go. And you can see that we've got free, free movement. Okay. Now, interestingly, if you look at the key and look at where those sidebar pins are, you've got one close by, two quite far in, three close by, uh, sorry, so um, I guess it's it's that position the pin needs to move to, then this position, then back again to this position, then back into this position. There's four uh, sidebar pins, and they need to be moved different places. So how can we uh, just use this little um, bar to set them? And it's because the gates in these sidebar pins are actually quite wide. When we gut this now, let's have a little look inside, I'm just going to uh, reset it and use a key actually, you'll be able to see how, whilst I, I generally quite like these um, Yale superiors, I, I do feel that, um, or Yale Platinums, I mean they're basically the same thing with a slightly different cam, um, even though I do like them, and I think they offer a reasonable level of security for the price, I, I do think that the tolerances overall inside the lock are a little bit weak. pins are like little T-pins so they don't um, fall into the keyway and the sidebar pins are up there and of course the gating in the sidebar pins themselves line up with the bottom of this and you can see that they, they're quite wide so you can rake these in quite easily which is um, how that tool wiggles um, these sidebar pins in so like I said you can see it's quite a large gap there about 50% um, tolerance. It's quite large. It does mean the lock will be reliable um, because it's not going to get stuck, but it does mean it's uh, not the high, too made to the highest tolerances. And if you look underneath, you can see that there is some just milling to add a little chamfered edge to where the key pins are nestled in as well. And that, of course, also means that these are slightly easier to pick. Um, although it does make the lock again a bit smoother and probably a bit more reliable and less sticky if you're not going to service it. Okay, let's uh, grab some of these. In fact, I'm, I'm not going to do it with tweezers. I'm just going to dump them out one at a time, going forwards this time because that's at the front. So these are these are kind of cool little pins. I know which order they're in, so um, and just quite quickly. Tiny little springs in there, look at that. Cool, huh? 
so what we've got there, and um, this is one to six, so I've got it backwards, is you have a classic sort of Yale double spool, all standards in positions two to six, and then an anti-bump sort of T-pin in position seven there. Very short springs, and that's because of the way that this lock is in two halves, and here's the other half. And you see that a lot of the Bible is taken up by this anti-snap hardened steel bar at the bottom, which sort of slides in like that. So that's why the springs need to be extra short. Um, if you do mess up one of those springs, it just cut a standard steel spring in half. It works fine as long as you get the uh, nice end top up. Okay, so there you go. That's the um, lovely Yale Superior or Yale Platinum pick by GJ Locks. Really, really nice work there. Um, and clearly it works very, very well. Just put the other bit there. There you go. So it's a yeah, very cool little set and works brilliantly. Okay, thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time.